Hello, welcome. I'm Julie Torrens. We're going to get started and I'm going to show you some supplies. We're going to make some ATCs. So I have here some book page and I tore off the margins. I've got some cardboard. This is what I'm going to use as my base. So I wanted to show you this is how it comes. And can you see the difference? I went ahead and sanded this. So I used one of these. This is for your nails. And I know you can get something like this at Home Depot that's a sanding block. But I like the size of this. I like that it's soft in the middle and it's washable. So you can um, clean off and use it again when it starts to get kind of full of the scraps. So I just wanted to show you this is I take this is what I do. I take the shine off. And then it will accept glue and paints and whatever much better. And then I do a stack of them at once. I just go outside and I do do this outside. But we're going to be using, I think, these three. I'm going to set those up. But you can see, I work on a bunch of them when I, when I do sand them up. And I recommend you do the same. And I recommend you do it outside. Now, this is music note paper. And all I did, if you've seen some of my previous videos where I, you know, throw things in my spray box and then just spray it. And that's all I did was I used spray inks and I sprayed some in fall colors and I sprayed some green. So I want to just show you, and again, I do these things in bunches. I don't just do it for one project. But I took these music notes and I cut them into autumn shapes. So you can see. I made some leaves like that, and I've got some other shapes of leaves, and I even got some bumpy leaves. So I'm going to be using these in my artist trading cards, but I wanted to show you how I do this because I think it can look harder than it is. And no, I don't have a die cut machine. I don't have room for one. And I just like, you know, I like to do my ephemera on my own. So I'm just gonna set this aside. But I saved two sheets so that I could just give you an idea of how I do it. So I just take this and I fold it. So I'm just folding it the long way. And then, of course, depending on what size I'm going to want, I may fold it again. I may not. What I'm going to do is I'm going to fold this in about thirds-ish there. So this is what I have. And now I just use my mind, and I think about the shape of a leaf. So I'm just going to grab some scissors, and I'm going to start with regular scissors. And I'm just going to make a little bit wider of a stem than maybe you would think of just because if you make it too little it's so fragile. Now if you've got some rumply types of scissors I don't care what the shape is you can use this and it'll give you such an interesting edge. So I'll just thought I'm going to show you and I'm just going to make kind of a of a teardrop shape. And yeah, these are kind of tricky, you know. They don't cut like regular scissors, but they cut well. And I just got mine from a thrift store, believe it or not. I sure did. So here we go. Thrift stores, garage sales, estate sales. These are all great places. Now I'm getting close to them. Okay, it came off. Sometimes I have to trim it up with the regular scissors. But now look at how many leaves in just that short of a time that I just made. So you can see, and again, I don't always do this just enough for one project. I go ahead and do enough. I'm going to just cut this over my trash. I just do enough, you know, to, to have some for now and to have some for later. But look, so I got one two, three, four, six leaves in just that amount of time. So it is something that I think you can do and just use your imagination and it does not have to be complicated at all. But grab your 
rumply scissors. Now I did some with, with regular scissors too. This is just one that I cut out and I just folded it a little different. Um, but not all of them. Here is another one that I did with just plain scissors. So it doesn't have to be rumply scissors, but it just can give you another look. So I've got my little dish of those. Then I did some magazine um, harvesting. So I've got some thinking small, you know, artist trading card, two and a half by three and a half, the size of a trading card, the size of a playing card. So I just cut out some little words and things that I thought would fit on an artist trading card. So I've got those here. And then I bought these. Now, these are, this one is flowers and this one is butterflies but I thought and they're 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 shaped like tickets I haven't even opened them yet but when I found these they were less expensive than I would certainly be willing to make so I don't buy a lot of ephemera but I say you know I always say never say never so I thought well maybe I'll use some of these because they did look even though it's floral the colors just seem to lend themselves to fall. So I thought, well, we'll see if maybe we'll use some of these. I don't know. I've got some other little ephemeras. You've seen these before. And these are just little tags and things that, again, something small that I could fit in a little spot where I've got a little room and I wish I could put something on it. All right. So let's take these. Now, I'm going to use, now this side, it's not shiny. And so I did not um, sand this side. This side is, is porous, it's, it's just raw. So I'm gonna do one side with the, um, with the book page, and then I'm gonna do the other side. I have this. So this is just from a notepad, but I'm gonna put this on the back because when you do artist trading cards, a lot of times you want to put your name, maybe your email, the date, all that kind of information. So I've got that for the other side. So let's get started on the book page side. And I think I'll put the book page side on here because if anything's going to show through a little bit, you know, that will be good. And I'm just going to set this aside, but I've got these handy. I don't want to lose my book page. I've got my glue book. That's ready to go. I've got some other little sundry things that we can use. I've got some spray inks and some drippy inks to work with as well. So first things first. Now, when I'm going to collage these, I am not going to be collaging um, small because what I want is for these things to be a background. I don't want them to be you know, just really standing out. Does that make sense? I don't want, I want this to, to be subtle. So I'm going to go ahead. I've got a glue stick. Okay. Change glue sticks. Now this Uhu glue stick, I see it used a lot. I hear a lot of good things about it. So I'm going to give it a try and let's get started. It's a lot bigger than I'm used to. That's okay. Adapt, right? Just adapt. Now, I don't care if this is going to be upside down, right side up, um, sideways, but I'm not going to put it at a catty corner. They're either going to be ups upside down, right side up, but not. Oh, look, I drew a face on there. Isn't that funny? I must have been doing some doodling. <laughs> yep, that's me. Anything's a piece of paper, anything's a substrate. You just go for it. Yeah. I'm glad you got to see that. You can just kind of see a little bit what I do. Now, because I tore off all the edges, the margins, I don't have real straight lines. So I'm probably going to have to go off the edge and then uh, trim it up, which is fine with me. It's not hard to do at all. And besides, these are just cut out from the food boxes, but I didn't square them up. Because, I, again, I, I kind of know that most of the time I don't have 
something that's going to be able to fit right along the edge and I'm going to be trimming the edges anyway. So I'm just going to go ahead and use this. I like this glue stick so far. It's nice and sticky, but it's not goopy. I don't like goopy. And um, that's kind of what I was experiencing from the other glue stick that I was using. The, um, I think it was, was it Scotch or 3M? Oh, I don't even remember. But I uh, I was just finding I was it was getting so goopy. And I didn't know if it was the weather because it was humid summer weather or what it was. But frankly, I wasn't going to wait around to find out. <laughs> I think I'll put this this way because I'm, oh, look, there's some of the drawing right here. I'm going to leave it. It's fine. Here's more on this side. Wait till you see this. Look. There's an eyeball. Here's some mouths and noses. Yeah, I was doing some kind of practice. I'm not going to use where the Sharpie bled through. But these, they're fine. They are fine. So what is on your agenda? Why am I doing... ATCs. Well, for one thing, I'm practically out of them. And I do use them a lot. I use them like a business card. I use them in gifts. I use them as gift tags. I just, I use them a lot and I, and I enjoy using them. But I am doing something I haven't done since I started my YouTube channel. As a matter of fact, I haven't done it in years. I got involved in a swap. Now, I've been in this Facebook group for literally years, and they don't only trade in the artist trading cards. This one just happens to be that. I've lurked in there for years. When I first joined, I was involved in quite a few, and I've got the collection, and it's wonderful to go through them and just see all the different parts of the country and the world that these came from. So I, I enjoy it, but I don't know. I, I My life just took a different turn, I guess, and I, I just didn't want to go ahead and agree to something and then not follow through. That's horrible. So I went ahead and just lurked. I still enjoyed seeing what other people made and I enjoyed the camaraderie. It was, it, it's a fun thing. So, but they had one for October and I, I think it's an autumn. I think they had two in October that you could sign up for. And one was Halloween and one was autumn. So I went with autumn and you're to make two artist trading cards. You have to sign up. There's, you know, some little rules. You sign up. They want you to post what you get and stay in communication with whoever you're buddied up with so they know when to expect what you've sent. They can look for it and they can let you know if it didn't come and just all that. But there's not much to it and, and it's a lot of fun. So, yeah. Do I recommend? Well, you know I recommend Facebook groups. Now, if there's anything like that on Instagram, I haven't found it, but Facebook groups are wonderful, in my opinion. You can get with like-minded people doing the kind of art that you like to do, and you can share ideas, you can ask questions. You know, there's people that ask questions about different kinds of maybe um, adhesives or different kinds of paint. And, you know, it's, it's sharing and, and it's just, it's, it's just great. You learn things. If you're paying attention, there's plenty to learn. So I enjoy, I'm in several groups. They're not all into trading and things. Uh, I'm in a mixed media group. Oh, and I'll tell you some of the art that's in there. Wow. Some of the beautiful canvases. But there's people like me, you know, that are more in the beginner phase of things. And uh, it's all good. It's all good. What other groups am I in? 
I'm trying to think. I know that some of you watch or follow Mary Me Small Art. I was in her group for, again, years. But I just started getting too many groups. And I just felt like it moved so fast. And I was just having a hard time keeping up. So I did opt out of that group for a while. But not to say I won't go back. Probably will. All right. I'm trying to make this fit, but I don't know that I can. It's one of those, if you sacrifice to the left, then you are got problems on the right. So, <laughs> just bite the bullet, Julie, and put one more sheet on. So, Facebook groups, I recommend. Read, read about them. Read the rules. Most of them have different types of posting rules. Lurk a while. You know, you don't have to uh, right away just be chiming in. Just, you know, you can lurk for a little while. And enjoy yourself. So I'm going to try to get three of these done, but we'll see how the time goes. As you know, I'm not the fastest maker in the world. But that's because I like to talk with you. So I'm so glad that you're here. If you like my content, I would appreciate if you hit the thumbs up and consider subscribing. I have, how many subscribers do I have? I, I believe it's over 300. Um, not sure how much, but I'm trying to reach the YouTube goals that they set for you, which is Three is it? It's a thousand. Three. Huh. It's a thousand subscribers. So obviously, I'm about a third of the way there, and then a four thousand watch hours, which YouTube they keep track of all this for you, which is nice. And the four thousand watch hours and your and your subs thousand subscribers have to be within the last. 12 months. I know for sure. I don't know about the subscribers. I, you just have to have the thousand subscribers, but your watch time hours have to be within the past 12 months. So, you know, if maybe you had a channel and you started it and you stopped it. it if it's been more than a year, those hours are not going to count. But I'm about... I want to say I'm I'm like almost halfway because I have over 2,000 watch time hours. So the watch time hours are adding up quicker than my subscribers. And so why do I why am I so big on this? Well, I'm sure you've heard of monetization, which is a good thing, um, but. That isn't really my my main goal in this. Well, sure. I mean, they, they're running ads. I've seen them. They're running ads on my videos anyway. So I might as well get a part of that. Why not? But you get other things. Like you can advertise your merchandise. Meaning the things that represent your channel. You know, if you get shirts, t-shirts, what have you. Um, I don't know that I'm going to do a whole lot with that. I don't, I don't know. I'm not saying I won't. It's just I haven't thought things through that far. Um, but you can also get a community tab, and that's what I want. I want to get a community tab, and I want us to be able to chat back and forth, kind of like a Facebook group. But with the Facebook group, you're asking people to click away from your YouTube channel and click into Facebook. Well, I would rather keep folks with me over on YouTube instead of clicking away to another website. Do you see what I mean? So that's my thinking is I, I really would like to be able to have the community tab where we can chat more, you can ask questions, and I just feel like it'll just help cement us into a community just a little bit more. I think it would be fun. Turn this around. 
So are you in any Facebook groups? And if you are, tell me which ones because I might join you. I mean, obviously, nobody can say that they know of every group that's out there. I mean, there's, there's, I'm, I know there's hundreds. There's probably thousands of Facebook groups because, you know, they're from every topic from soup to nuts. So if you found a group that you particularly enjoy that has to do with making like we do um, at some level or another, I would love to hear about it. I really would. And will I ever start a Facebook group? Facebook group? Well, you know, it's going to depend. It's going to depend on, you know, just when it's time for me to make that decision, what YouTube has done. YouTube has made some big changes lately. Like, like lately as in the past two days. So... YouTube can change. Um, a lot of the changes are coming about as a result of the YouTube shorts and figuring out how to monetize people that do a lot in shorts. Now, I don't have a lot of shorts out there. I have done some and uh, I've gotten a, a pretty good response. But for me, because I'm not a big editor, I don't know how to take one of my videos and then speed it up. Because your best bet for a YouTube short is to keep it at 10 seconds-ish, 10 or 15 seconds. So to try to, I'm done with this one, going to do one more. To try to do something like that in 15 seconds, well, it's just a little bit hard for me. So last one on this side. So let me know what Facebook groups you're in. Let me know if you have a YouTube channel. Let me know in the comments. I've had several who have joined me and because they're some setting that you have is public, um, I, get, I get a notification when people join and I always check to see if you have a YouTube channel because if it's of a topic that's of interest to me, I will definitely subscribe and take a look at, at what's going on, on on your YouTube channel. I find that, you know, very interesting. And I, I mean, I've subscribed and watched and commented and all that on, on several different YouTube channels that have been kind enough to subscribe to me. So, let me know. And really, of course, I would love it if you would subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you get notifications every time I put a new video up. But you don't have to hit the icon bell and so if you're like, oh, I'm already getting so much email, I'm already getting so many notifications. Well, I, I understand that. So, you know, don't make it difficult on yourself. Just just go ahead and think about um, subscribing. And then maybe you can hit the bell later when, you know, things shift or change for you. And uh, I perfectly well understand. And I don't know who's all hit the button. I know I... I believe, I say I know, I believe there's a way that a person like me can check. I thought I had a good place for this. Was it here? Was it here? Maybe it was here. Um, who's rung the bell and who hasn't? Or how many, I, I do know how to look at how many people that have watched my video are subscribers. Again, I don't get a name or a number, I mean, you know, like, like who you are, but just that a certain percentage are already subscribers. And to tell you the truth, many of my videos are being watched by people who are not subscribed, which is fine. Welcome. Join us. We're a friendly little community. 
we do art journaling and mixed media and we are a judgment free zone so there's no expectations you just come and relax and enjoy yourself to me that's what this is all about nobody wants to feel like they've got someone at their back you know it's no fun so this book as I'm just going page by page here this book is about economics why did I pick an economic book well because I don't have to worry at least I haven't worried I don't think I should have to worry about things like bad words or controversial topics being brought up and let me tell you I picked a book that was in like the like junior high type age and I thought you know that would be safe oh no talking about gaslighting people talking about uh, bullying people and I just thought oh no 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 people want to relax and get away from all that no controversial topics so that book went aside but I was surprised and kind of sad to tell you the truth that young people have so much of that on their mind get a little piece right here Got one little dot there that needs filling up. There we go. Okay, I'm going to turn this around. So what's on your work table? Are you doing some, some sketching? Are you working in an art journal? What's happening? You know, uh, if you've, again, if you've watched some of my videos, there was, it still is, an ad that's been running, at least on my uh, feeds. And I mean on Google all the way around. It's not just YouTube. It's, it's Facebook. It's Instagram. It's all kinds of things. But it's for a class. Um, and it's a, it's a art class. These are banging, so... I'm afraid that's making a noise for you. And I don't think you need to hear all that. So anyway, yes, she is doing this. Well, one of the classes, because there's I've seen now a couple. Of course, you know, when I was looking at one, that means they're going to start showing me more and more, which is fine. Um, but this art class, she was saying that in, in the advertisement, I haven't taken the class. In the advertisement, she's saying that if you practice 20 minutes a day and I thought you know it's so true it is so true especially painting drawing things like that you do get muscle memory you do get better and better and I'll tell you this class the only reason why I'm not taking it is because I do not want to take a class that's being advertised like it is and then have that perhaps like where, where I would be kind of pirating the art because it would come through on what I do. Now, I did do a video about just seeing the advertisement and could I do it? Well, to me, that advertisement is way out there in the public. I didn't copy, but I just tried to mimic the technique and uh, just to see if, if I could as a challenge to myself. Um, but I would not have done it, take, you know, take the class because I think I could just be too influenced. Okay, we've got our three book page ready. So I'm going to set aside the book page and I'm going to go ahead and put the other side on where it's going to be lined. Now, I already kind of measured this out and it will be best if I do the three inches 
by two and a half inches to get the most out of a sheet. If I find that I have a leftover piece, I'm not going to waste it. But see, I'm, I am going to put the lines going this way compared to going this way so that the lines should have the right orientation. However, if they don't, for whatever reason, it's not a big deal. I'm, I'm not going to fret about it because I can always write sideways. I mean, it's no, it, it, there's no rules, so I can write on it any way I want. But I do know, and, and, and I'm, in, I'm right there, I'm included in that, that I want my artist trading card that someone trades me, I want their information. Not that I'm gonna haunt them, but you know, where did it come from and things. So you don't have to put like your supplies or anything like that. I just usually put my email and my name and the city and state that I'm from. Oh, look what I did. I put the glue on the... Been known to do that. Let's put the glue on the back instead of the front. It's because I'm talking. But yep, I put where I live. Not my house address. I don't put my phone number. But an email address. And it's fun. Now, I am going to be going over the top a little bit and over the sides. And it's not going to be necessarily perfectly smooth. And none of those things bother me. You know what I say. If you want everything just perfect and just so, well, you know, get a hand, get a, get a, a machine printed one from the store and call it a day. But these are handmade with love and with our own talents. And that's where that is. All right, I'm going to turn this sideways so I can see a little better what I'm doing here. And, you know, I, I'm going to try to line those up. But if it's not perfect, I'm not worrying about it. Okay, now I think I can just cut one of these in half, and that'll fit, sure. So I told you why I'm making artist trading cards, and we went over our supplies, joined Facebook groups. <laughs> Did we cover all our bases? <laughs> Let me know in the comments if there's if you have a question because sincerely I'll answer it if I can if I know the answer or if I know maybe where you can find the answer. Look at that. Well, I think I can cover that up with this one. Yeah, I can. I think I'll put it this way. Yep. All right. That went fast. One of the things I like about the glue stick is it does dry fast. Now, those of you who've heard my glue stick speech, I'm sorry, but there's always new people, always, always. I buy glue sticks that are designed to stick. You say, well, they all are. Well, if it says designed for children, if it says washable, if it, all of those kinds of words, that means it's designed that if a child glues something where they shouldn't, you have a chance of getting it off. And so the glue is not necessarily as robust as maybe you may want it to be. So that's why I do not, you know, Fort, oh, well, that's the German, uh, Stark and Chanel, Oh, that's German too. <laughs> Stark and schnell, schnell. Uh, strong and fast. And it does talk about, do not use this if you're going to expect to pull this apart when you're done. You know, it's not like a post-it note. This is designed to stick. So, let's 
keep that in mind. And when you're buying a glue stick, that's what you want. Something that is definitely designed to stick. And there's a lot of good glue sticks. So far, I like this one that I'm using, but there's other brands too. And as I said, do pick one out that has crafting in mind, that has permanency in mind, all those kinds of things. Because glue stick, I like the way that it's dry or almost dry. I like the way that it doesn't cause paper to curl. And I like that it is a little bit repositional. So if you didn't quite get it right the first time, you're, you're given a chance to, to try again. So all those things I like. I think I can just tear this again. So I've been working in my art journal the past couple of, or a art journal, the past couple of videos. And I'm enjoying that a lot. And I've gotten some very encouraging comments. So I appreciate that very much. Comments help us so much because it tells YouTube that people are engaging with our videos. Am I talking about YouTube too much? I'm sorry. I guess that's what I'm reading a lot about and watching other YouTube videos about. And so it's on my mind. It is definitely autumn here, but we're at the end of September. So it's time to be autumn here in Michigan. That's where I'm at. Now I have just a tiny little space I'll deal with it if I need to, but it wouldn't surprise me if that ends up just being cut off when I square the paper up. Last one of these. Do I have enough? I sure do. Okay. We had just a sudden change. We were literally 80s and 90 degrees. And then we had some thunderstorms roll through. And on the other end of the thunderstorms, it was like in the 50s and 60s. And although we haven't had a freeze yet, they are indicating that we're not far from it. Now, they're not talking about a killing freeze yet, but that we will have a little bit of wake up to some frost pretty soon. And again, doesn't surprise me. I mean, it's almost October. So here in Michigan, you know, Halloween is the end of October and to have snow before Halloween here on the west side of Michigan where I'm at, that's not uncommon. That is not uncommon at all. And a lot of the plants, you know, your annuals, your uh, poinsettias and things, geraniums, they're finishing up. You can tell that they're, they're, they're saying, hey, it's uh, time to shut down shop. They sure are. Okay, let's get this one on. Let me turn it around. And I am, so, look at, so sticky. And you know what that dark is from? The sanding. And even though I wipe these off and that, that's why I do that sanding outside. That dust gets everywhere. You know, and I even took a little brush and brushed them off. But, yeah, I don't want all that in my house. And I still have it in my house. Sure do. So the part that we're doing right now is probably the longest and the slowest part. But, uh... People tell me they want to see the process, so I didn't make these ahead because I wanted you to see the process. One more. 
I guess I could have cut that one in half. I didn't. I can do this one in half. Does this seem like a project you can do? Or have you done any artist trading cards? Or maybe you've done some trading. Maybe you have a collection. There are people that are trying to get like all the different countries, all the different states of the United States. You just, you hear and read about all kinds of different ways that people are utilizing artist trading cards. Okay. Well done. And let's start trimming. Okay, so this was the first one I got done, and you can just tell how much drier it is from the last one I got done. So let's just give this a trim. And I, I'm not cutting into the cardboard. I'm just cutting the paper. But I, I am going to want to be able to kind of see these edges a little bit so that I can put it on the trimmer and trim it up. But not yet. Okay. I think that's good. I can also get a gander at if any of the edges are wanting to pop up. And I do when I'm when I am sanding, I really work hard to get to the edges and the corners because I think that's where it the papers stress the most and if they're going to pop up that could be where they're going to pop up I can still see an awful lot of paper here did I even cut the side? I think I did okay one more And then we're going to do some more decorating, which I have to say is really one of my favorite parts. But this part that we just went through, this is relaxing to me. Sit back and enjoy the process. You know, uh, put some music on, get a nice cup of tea. Make the time, make the time your own. Why not? Now, some people watch shows. I can't do that. Now, I'm going to go ahead and take a baby wipe because I don't want to get black fingerprints just scattered around this now. I mean, I there's always something you can do about it if it happens. But if I can avoid it, I think that would be good. Yeah, some people, they watch movies and stuff I can't keep track of one or the other I mean you look at I can barely talk with you and keep my mind on what I'm doing so I can't imagine watching a complex movie and uh, being able to keep track of a storyline maybe if it was a movie I'd seen before I don't know not tried it uh, other people listen to podcasts I can do that um, and the, and the good thing about podcasts is you, you, you upload them to yourself and then you can stop it, back it up. You know, it's, it's not just going to rattle on without you. So give that a try. Okay. So the, the side that has the, the, the ruled lines, I'm not, I'm not going to do anything with those yet. But now this side, I want to add some color. I want to add some something. So I've got my little sprays and I've got some drippity inky stuff. And I thought, if I fold this in half, will it be wide enough? Not really, but we'll just see what we can do. Okay, so first I've got these inks. I've used them before and they're called botanical stains. And I think they're supposed to mimic when you do like um, staining from things like avocado staining and stuff. This one I think is avocado stain, yeah. So I'm just gonna kinda drizzle and drip some of this on. Now this book page is pretty absorbent, so it's gonna make some marks. 
And then I'm just going to take this and drip it off. And get those drip lines. Can you see? Just like that. And now I'm going to set on. No, it didn't go through. And now I'm just going to give it a rub. But it sunk in. That's cool. Okay. Step one. <laughs> Maybe I'll go ahead with step two on this. Well, I'm just going to hit it with, uh, this is vintage photo. I'm just going to hit this with a little bit of spray. That's why I'm not worried about being in a box. I can pick that up quick and just give it a rub. I can even spray it on here and then rub it on. I'm just kind of doing a, a form of distressing, I would say. And this is Vintage Photo. It is a spray stain, but it came in a dauber. So I poured it into a spray bottle because I find that's handier for me. Okay, that looks good. Leave that go. Let's work on this one. And I think this time... I am going to grab the the other one, not the pink one. Okay, this is a tea stain. Get the corners, Julie. Get the edges. I tend not to, which is bad. Now I'm just tip it up and let her run. Okay, and now I'm gonna I'm gonna hit this one with this is um green and it is a dirty martini, and I've got my paper towel here. I'll give it a quick rub. I'm gonna go ahead and put some more on my paper towel. Now I'm really rubbing, so if I rub up some of these places, I'll just tack them down later, no problem. Okay, so here's our first two. One more. All right. Can I reuse this? I hate to keep throwing paper towels away. And the reason why I don't, I'm not that, that wasteful. It's just that, whoops, well that wasn't too brilliant. I'm just trying to go fast. All right, I'm just grabbing this one. I don't know which one it is. I think it's the it's the avocado, I believe. Okay. And up it goes. Drip, 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 it's dripping on my hand. Okay, a little dripped on the back. I don't care. It's fine. And I'm going to go back with the brown this time. Pick it up off the desk. Give it a rub. And maybe I'll, I just grabbed that green. Maybe I'll grab this green. We haven't used this green yet. This one is Cracked Pistachio, Tim Holtz. Just get a little bit of green here and there. Got some on my finger. Okay, can you see? Good. All right. Let's lid all these up. This has got brown. I've got one more lid. We'll put these aside. So now we've got these three like this. Okay. 
Now, I can see where some of these have popped up a little bit, but I think it's just because they're they're wet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit this with the heat gun, but we're going to talk. So I'm not going to send you away. Here we go. So I did a video just before I think this one where I did another acrylic and I did the heat gun and I edited it out on YouTube and YouTube has a thing after you edit a video that it's called processing and it's getting it ready for you know the regular and the HD viewing well normally that takes a couple of hours even maybe three or four hours well this was three days and it, you know when in your video you go to do anything else with your video and it'll say it's still processing don't you can't do anything so you just kind of wait on that well after three or four days it finally looked like it was done it wasn't giving me that message so i went ahead and put it out there none of my editing was done so now my video is out there with a great big long dry time I put it out there I saw that it wasn't right I took it down and I got messages hey I wanted to finish that video I put it back up so if you see one of my videos and you think wow well that's why but I'm not gonna hurry up and Start doing that to more videos until I figure out what what happened with that because I honestly don't know okay these look pretty dry to me drier anyway dry enough all right now I'm going to hit this with a little bit of water it won't take it off completely but it will make it easier for me to clean up when I uh, use some kitchen spray on it, but see how much I can get up already. And I'm also hoping that it will help keep it from wanting to go on, uh, on the wrong side. Okay. Well, the next step is gonna be cutting these two and a half by three and a half. So I've got my trimmer and let's just Hope and pray that it works. It's getting old. And once I can turn my business into something that's actually making me a little bit of an income, I would like to be able to uh, purchase a new one. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to square this up to begin with. So I'm holding it as best I can straight, but this top is not straight. So here we go. Now I have a straight line. So as I hold it up against the top, I should be getting a straight line and I can just square the whole thing up. At least that's how I square things up. If there's a better way, let me know. because this works well, but I might be wasting my time. I don't know. All right, so this is nice and square now. So I should be able to go, and this is gonna be better with the two and a half going this way. So this is at seven and a half. So I should take it to five, right? One, two and a half, yes, to five. Wow, that looks awfully narrow. Check it again. No, it's not seven and a half. See, measure twice. It's six and a half, okay? So that means four. Okay, four. And that should be two and a half. And now 
two and a half right there and yes I'm gonna have some left over I knew that but you know I'm not using like a 12 by 12 paper so now this came up a little on that edge we're just gonna leave it and then I can fix it later if I need to now this needs to be three and a half which I believe is there don't you come out don't you do it oh this thing only when I'm here with you does this happen but there we go all right three and a half so three and a half yes right there Oh, that one really snagged up the paper. And you know what? If I would let this sit overnight, I wouldn't have this trouble, but I want to be here with you. So it's the way it is. Always a workaround. We can always fix it. Okay. There's two, which is all I need for the Three and a half. That's all I need for the exchange for the swap is two. But people always send extra. Oh, look. Let's see if I can get this back down. Can you see that? Yeah. I'll be able to fix it. And there, okay, three and a half. Okay. Now I am going to, you saw me do this. We'll see if we have time to do more, but I don't want to just keep doing repeat, repeat, repeat stuff. So let's see about these three. And the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to get my art glitter glue, pardon the reach, and I'm going to see about fixing these little tears. And art glitter glue dries amazingly fast and really sticks. It's expensive compared to an awful lot of other white PVA glues, but it works like none other. Oh, that piece came right off in my hand. We'll just put it right back. There we go. Okay. I knew I had another one here. Try not to be so rough. Okay. Oh, one more. And again, you know, if you're not doing all of this, if you're maybe doing it more in an assembly line fashion, and you can just, you know, like do all your backgrounds and then do all your fronts and all your backs, you know, and, and that way you're not kind of rushing it. Okay, so let's do these four. So first thing I want to do is I want to get at least one leaf on them. Now I do have these which I could lay across and I'm not opposed to that. But let's just see about some of these others. Like here. And maybe here. I think I would like this one like that better. All right. And here's another one. That's kind of a bigger one. Maybe I have a another smaller one. 
Small ones tend to fall to the bottom of whatever container I have. Here's a smaller one. Uh-huh. Okay, I like that. Now this one is real speckly. And these are, again, on music note paper. So let's get another smallish one. Like that. And one more. There's a smallish one. Kind of a medium. I've got these. What about this? This is a heart-shaped one. Those look an awful lot the same color. I'm going to pull one out that's... This one is a little bit browner. Okay. I think those are those are good, good designs. So let's grab my glue stick and let's get these down. So what are you doing for autumn? Did you make yourself maybe a wreath for your door that's autumn-y? Those are always so pretty. You, the colors of autumn are just so brilliant, aren't they? Maybe you made one of those pumpkin trees where you have pumpkin on top of pumpkin on top of pumpkin. Or maybe you have a, a centerpiece with gourds on your dining room table. Let me know what's, what's, what's autumn going on at your house. I'm interested. Let me know in the comments. I don't have a wreath on my door. We, we have to be careful. I suppose I could get like a um, command hook, but you can't have one of those metal things that goes over your door because they're fire doors and it can let smoke in and stuff. So we can't have that. But I, I've seen some people with those command hooks. And then I could put some type of holiday decoration on my door. I went with my daughter-in-law to Michael's last weekend. We also went to a little art show. Oh my, wasn't that fun. But anyway, we went to Michael's and she got some garland that had kind of beads or berries or something and some little pumpkins and things and she strung it up on her dining room light so cute just so cute and now I mean even last week it's already considered late to be starting that kind of decorating so they were having sales of course the minute they came out they were on sale but they think they started at 50% off and now they're up to 70% off. It's not even October yet. <laughs> wow, this one's pretty on both sides. I think I'm going to do the mottled side up. Because that's how leaves are. Okay. Now, I will be finishing all these, and I, I'm feeling, you know, the time sensitivity of this. I'm not going to be able to use these really much past November, so these are going to go out to, you know, be used. I'm not going to store them, that's for sure. Okay, so now I've got these little leaf backgrounds which I think are fun. Now, I could, I've got my Poscas out. I could outline them with Poscas, but let's just see. I've got these little pictures and some little words. See, like I've got this little birdie. So see, I'm not sure that I necessarily want to cover it up. And then I have like little words like this. See, I like that, just like that. And I, I'm glad that I, I'm not gonna rumple up my leaves with uh, Pasca. This guy might be too big. Yeah, he's too big, but it's a cute bee, isn't it? 
I've got these two little lovebirds, which I think are just so cute. And let's see, what do I have? Hmm. I have forces of nature. Yeah, okay, I think I'll do that. I've got this little birdie. He's having a little snack from a from somebody's little bird feeder. And this says play. That's cute. Okay, one more. I just love this duck. Now, I hope it's not too big. Where can I go? Here. He's big, but tell you what I can do. I'm going to trim him up just around his head. I didn't mind the five because, let's face it, I go ahead and, and add numbers to things all the time. So why not have a number? But I can just cut him out like that. It's a her. Cut her out like that. And then what kind of a word? Life? Start with art. I like life. Yeah. What do you think? I think it looks good. Let's get these on. And then we'll start with the next phase. All right, I'm gonna start with this one. I have no idea how we're doing on time, but for those of you who have stuck with me this far, I sure am grateful, very grateful. Do you have a bird feeder? I do not, I've had them in the past. But when I was living in the Detroit area, there's a little tear up here that I'm gonna just tack down. Um, they were so concerned with rats, which is a real thing. And even though you can say, well, my bird feeder is not designed to feed off of the ground, you know darn well those birds sling that stuff to the ground. Uh-oh. Where did my little word go? Oh, Julie. Did I cover it up? I sure did. So yeah, I, I had a bird feeder, but couldn't couldn't keep it. And I understood why. I'm not I, I'm not arguing that at all. It it was a good decision. So and now where I live now, I'm upstairs and there's a, a balcony patio kind of thing below me. And you know how again the birds scatter those seeds. And so you know, that makes a mess. And I just would feel bad to have somebody have to go outside and sweep every day because of my bird feeder. So don't have a bird feeder. This winter, I might get a suet feeder because a suet feeder doesn't litter. And your meat eating birds like blue jays, they like suet and they don't have a whole lot of choice of foods in the winter. So I may get, I may do that. Another thing that um, will go for your suet is, uh, well, if you know, send me some uh, comments about what eats out of the suet feeder. But I, I know blue jays do. And uh, woodpeckers will go for the suet. So I very well may get some of that. I have a, a little stand that you can hook a plant or two. I didn't have a plant. That made me sad, but I didn't really have a plant on my porch because, or my, my balcony, because they were working on it. They were, they repainted, they redid the floor. So, and they did that, of course, in the summer months. Well, you couldn't have your plants out there in the way. Frankly, whatever was out there, like my two chairs, you had to bring in. So, I did not want to have to bring in a, a big old hanging plant. So I didn't have one this year. But that same thing that can I can hook a plant to, I can also hook 
a suet feeder. So I'm, like I said, I very well may do that because it's so, isn't it fascinating and interesting just to watch those things? I think it is. Okay, now I've got those decorations on, but they obviously still, in my opinion, they don't look finished. So how are we going to finish them? Okay, first thing I'm going to do is I've got my corner rounder. And I'm going to round these corners. And sometimes you kind of have to trim it up when you, when it, when it's done. And that's common because, you know, we're going through two layers of paper and a layer of uh, cardboard. And then again, I've got this popping up here a little bit. And so I'm just going to tack it down. The edges do that. I mean, they just do. It's no reflection on your talent or your glue or how much you sanded it. It would be worse if you didn't sand it. That's for sure. So that didn't feel right. Let's try it again. Yep. And there. And I just think that makes such a difference. This corner is suffering. Let's fix it up a little bit. Okay, but now look, the difference between this one and this one. Doesn't that just look more finished? I think it does. I've got a little something sticking up here. Tack it down. And give it a trim. There we go. Okay, so let's pop these corners in. So are you getting ready like for winter that you're going to have a, a bird feeder slash squirrel feeder slash whatever? Again, I am interested in what you've got going on for the winter. Are you allowed to have them? Maybe you're in a situation like me where the city or the county does not want you to have those kinds of feeders. I don't know, but you can let me know. Sometimes when your corner puncher doesn't want to give you a nice clean corner, it's because it's so full, but I did just empty it before I turned the camera on. So I know that's not the problem, but had I not, I know full well that could be the problem because they do fill up fast. And I've seen all kinds of corner rounders out there. So get one that works well for you. Let me get these little crumbs. Last one. Okay. Give this a trim. Well, okay. Okay. All right. Now, what else? Now, see the backs? Can you see the lines? So that will be fine. This one needs a trim. That'll be fine to do writing on, right? Okay. Now I've got my inks. And I need a little sponge. It's right here behind me. And I'm gonna ink up the edges. And since I already have the brown, I'm gonna use Vintage Photo because I think it lends itself to the autumn rather than black. I think it lends itself to the colors that we've already put on here. And then any little problems, I'm going to do both sides, any little problems that had developed because of the cutting and all that, you'd be surprised how that will kind of cover up. Can you see this thing's just kind of littering? 
I think it's because they're so old. Look, I've had them so long. So what I'm going to do, if I, if I tried to brush that away, I would end up with inky lines. So I'm just going to put this here and let it fall on my glue book. And we're going to just keep right on going. And I just may need to invest in another $1.25 and get some more cosmetic sponges. Because I have had this pack, oh, maybe maybe seven years, eight years. So they may have just dried up. Can you blame them? Probably like thinking, Julie, what more can you get from us? Now, I made a little mark there by accident. I'll show you what I'm going to do about that. <laughs> I said there's a work around everything. I'll I'll fix that. I'll leave it upside down and I'll fix that after I'm done with this mess. Oh boy. I really distressed that up. That's okay. We'll just be a little bit more robust on the way around, right? There, that looks fine to me. One more. Thank you for joining me. It is so fun to be able to craft with you. And I just hope that maybe you're crafting along, even if you're not doing the same thing. We can still have a nice crafty conversation, huh? Sure. Now, remember I told you if I got like some stray marks or anything on my backs that I would be able to fix it? Well, that's what I'm going to do right now. All right, I'm tearing this off because I don't want to get these ink things on my carpet because... That will be a disaster. All right. Set it back here now. So that back, this back is okay. This one's okay. This one, I got a little something on the back right there. And this one's got a little mark right there. So what am I going to do? I've got this little stencil. And I'm just going to make a little blotch. Like that. See? And I got another little blotch. Like that. See? Isn't that cute? I could even go nuts and put one like this on the corner. And I'm just using the ink that's on there. I'm not adding more. See? Isn't that fun? Let's do all of them. What do you say? Yeah. Boy, Julie, that slob. What did she do? She ruined the back of my card. <laughs> there. <laughs> Look. <laughs> you know, if I wanted to make these marks on purpose, I wouldn't be able to, right? <laughs> Give it a little more ink. Why not? It's really, really goober it up. <laughs> there. One more. Whoever gets this, she's probably going to open it and say, oh, I better wash my hands. <laughs> yeah. There. Okay. <laughs> That's fun. That was worth the whole show, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. Julie splashing her coffee all over the backs of her artist trading cards. All right. So these are some autumn trading cards, artist trading cards. And we've got four of them. And I think they came out lovely. I'm going to be signing the backs and putting my little info on there. In the meantime, please hit the like, subscribe, and if you really enjoyed this, consider sharing it with your friends or maybe on your Facebook group that does 
ATC swaps. Let me know about your groups. And in the meantime, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.